I joined SAPOL, I thought it was a job with honour. Protecting the community, catching the bad guys, putting the scumbags behind bars, making people safe in their homes. But it's not like that. We're tax collectors. This goes to the very top. It goes to headquarters. It's a culture. It comes from the commissioner and trickles down. It's the sound we hate, even when we're right. When it comes to court, it's your word against the constabulary. And no guess whose word the court is more likely to believe. The light was green when I turned the corner. And there's no way that that, uh, that light was red. These are confidential, top-level police emails, not seen by the public until tonight. They come from inspector ranks, written proof that police have official targets, that cops are obliged to book a minimum number of fellow South Australians, whether they've committed a crime or not. Here's one from a regional service commander. I now require a report from each team sergeant and officer in charge of each station, how they plan to achieve their weekly benchmarks. I do not want a list of excuses. I require your plans as to how you will achieve this task. We'd go out to deliberately provoke somebody. We'd go outside a pub or a nightclub, approach somebody, try and stir them up, try and provoke them. And if we got the required reaction, we'd grab them. SAPOL officers are required to get 380 cannabis expiation notices. By law, we've got to have reasonable grounds to search somebody. But police will go through pockets, handbags, where they have no grounds. This is illegal. These are illegal searches. We're breaking the law. Drivers are most vulnerable, even when there's no road safety issue involved. We'd wait at a stop sign for what we call a rolling stop. The car had to move only a couple of inches, just the barest minimum. We'd ping them. Basically, know that that means you've got to get out there and bring in the loot for the government. It's working. Government wants us to speed. It's in the budget. Labor banks on fining us $145 million a year, and fines cost two to three times more here than in, say, Queensland, even for non-safety issues like not showing a pee plate or the easier gotcha, toe balls that partially obscure a number plate. This is part of the strategy that's been pushed down by, uh, by government onto the police department to, uh, you know, bring in as much money as they possibly can. Owen Godfrey is a former Star Force officer, 16 years in the force, now a road safety campaigner opposed to high fines for trivial offences. It's easy money and they can always couch it in terms of, well, it's about road safety, which of course they know is a load of rubbish and police know is a load of rubbish and uh, it just seems that everybody's having to live this lie constantly. The uh, road toll and uh, road accidents have rather remained static and, and plateaued or in, in actual fact in a lot of cases they have, uh, they have climbed. If you fell behind, you've got to rock it up your ass. This is what we call the Wooden Spoon Award. It's a competition. We have teams one to five, and the team with the least amount of arrests and uh, expiations wins the Wooden Spoon Award. It's humiliating. Nothing to do with road safety. They cop the fine. We don't get the Wooden Spoon Award. Just touching a white line like this one, a stiff fine. In the case of a rolling stop, that could mean a loss of license, a $450 fine, three expiation points. This is incredibly devastating for many people whose job involves them being on the road a lot of the time. People who are salespeople, courier drivers, taxi drivers. If they lose their licence, they can lose their job or lose their business, lose their homes. It sometimes affects their, uh, their, uh, their family situation and a lot of the time it affects their mental health. A spokesperson for Commissioner Grant Stevens, recently under fire for this taxpayer-funded overseas trip, admitted to Today Tonight that police have a set number of so-called benchmarks they have to meet. Last year, Bill Thomas was in the city driving with his wife. He stopped for a red light at King William Street. It turned green. He went around the corner, and police were behind him. It's got a siren on. I've got to pull over. Bill went to court five times before being acquitted. 
would have been a lot cheaper for you to actually just have paid the fine. Sure, but there's a principle too. You want to clear your name. And uh, yes, yeah, sure, I could have taken the easy way out and paid $487 and, um, and had a uh, driving record. Bill's case was widely talked about within SAPOL. Last week, Bill was at a service club when a stranger approached. And he said, I'm a retired police officer. And um, he said, uh, I know what happened. They're after a quota. These targets are a danger to SAPOL. In the country, a police officer would know most of the people in the community. If he pulls somebody over and books him and he knows it's unfair, there are no duels out there. Off duty, he's not talked to at the local footy, his kids' footy matches, the netball matches. He's ostracised. So from being a respected member of the community, a police officer, he's now an outcast. There are a lot of decent cops, but what do you do? We've got to make targets and we want to keep our jobs.